Hi there, if you just joined us, don't forget to subscribe and uh, press the notification button and also like our show. Right now, it's Anastasia Karen Raj right here on the RSS with HD. Hi there, welcome to the RSS with HD with myself, Rashid Saleh and Harris Joel. As usual, we've got a really fun guest today. Um, you haven't probably seen her in a long, long while. That's because she's been away for a long, long while. But, you know, it's very good to keep uh, to uh, get in touch with her right now. Let's get her right here on the show. Hi, Anastasia Kanraj. Welcome to the RSS with HD. We're very honoured to have you here on the show with us. Aren't we, Harish? Yes, we are. And Anastasia, <laughs> first and foremost, uh, we've got a debate um, throughout the whole week. So how do you pronounce her name? Anastasia, Anastasia or Anastasia? Anastasia? Is it Russian or is it English? <laughs> so either way, I'm fine. Uh, back in Malaysia, the reporters used to call me Anastasia. Oh, they're it very, very Russian. Russian, eh? Russian. I know. <laughs> yeah. So I'm fine. Some people call me Karen, so... Depends on how flexible you guys are. Oh, okay. okay, but when so you thanks. were growing up, when you were growing up, what was the nickname? Nah, be be be, be truthfully honest. Miss Raj. Okay, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> so friends call me Anna. Uh, uh -huh. Usually uh, during the sports time, the, the Malaysian journalists call me Karen. Uh, because okay. Anastasia was complicated. <laughs> for, yeah, yeah. For, for sports journalists then, right? I'm not going to say anything now. <laughs> keep, keep quiet. <laughs> Take it away, Harish. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, today we have Anastasia. Uh, you say I'm pronouncing it right, yeah? Anastasia. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Convent Central girl who went yes. on to work part-time as a waitress at Concord Hotel. Yep. She ended up in race walking, which she will explain why. Broke the national record like 13 times or more. Um, she will explain later. Represented the country in the Olympics. Yes, she is an Olympian. And today she's a leading figure in Lear Corporation based in Shanghai. Anastasia, take us through your exciting, exciting journey. From the, oh, wow. <laughs> from the central girl to the Shanghai leader. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I need to compact everything in five minutes or two minutes. Okay, so um, uh, I'm from Sentul. Sentul is uh, not a very well-off uh, community, and uh, actually, I was I was actually a premature child, seven month, less than seven month old, and my parents thought that I would not make it actually, and I was left in the hospital in the incubator. And I knew that from a very young age, I had that fighting spirit to just to live. So I basically, you know, uh, looked for a purpose in life that I could shine. And race walking gave me that opportunity. So, yeah, I worked very hard, uh, been a waitress before, uh, done all the odd jobs uh, just to have extra pocket money. And from Sentul, now I am in Shanghai uh, as an expat. Uh, and I'm covering over nine over countries. I'm doing dual roles. Just, just life has just transformed so much over the last 20, 25 years. Yeah. So in a nutshell, that's my life. But you, you missed out one crucial, important element. Uh -huh. I'm sure you missed the nasi lemak or the food at Jaya restaurant. <laughs> oh my gosh, you know Jaya restaurant. <laughs> You're not the only one from Sentul, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have one of the best Hokkien Mee, okay? Hokkien and Hokkien Kong Mee. Chow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, uh, more importantly, Anastasia, uh, mm -hmm. on a serious note, do you still keep tabs on the uh, Malaysian athletics scene? Um, I, I would say uh, not 100%, but nevertheless, you know, my DNA is sports. You know, the first thing you want to check out in a newspaper is sports. What's going on? Who's playing, you know? And of course, my three kids are a soccer player and uh, 
they are a liverpool fan so you can imagine the liverpool glory going on now can we end this conversation rashid yeah i think it's, i think it's over now so let's 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 move on to another guest sorry sorry sorry, sorry. <laughs> So uh, I guess you guys are not a Liverpool fan, but I am not a Liverpool fan. Just to put the, uh, you know, the 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 track here correct, all right? Um, so um, uh, sports, uh, I would I would say that. Um, sorry, what was your question again? <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. See see what happens <laughs> when you 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 talk talk about football. And and Liverpool, you, you just go, you just go crazy. I mean, stick to rugby or something, or, or walking, walking. I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for the soul. <laughs> so so I I, I I do I do follow I do follow uh, the athletics. I do look at athletes who do well, and if they break record, I encourage them. And some of them, I'm in touch with them through Facebook, or give them a motivation, or you know, a pat at the back. Uh, it's not easy to to be an athlete in Malaysia, and also not easy to uh, be a record holder. So uh, I'm in touch. I check out the papers. I go online and look at what's going on. So uh, that's pretty much okay. Uh, what Ms. I do. Isha, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you just said about it's not easy being a record holder. Now mm -hmm. here's the thing: many records in the country have yet to be broken. Mm -hmm. um, they are decades long. Yeah. You know, and, mm -hmm. and no one has seemed to even go near those records that are still in place in our history books. Now, what are your thoughts? Because that pretty much says that the sport is stagnant. We forget about comparing ourselves with uh, the rest of the region. Just mm -hmm. compare our performances today with those with those of the record. Yeah. yeah. With those yeah, of the yeah. record, you know, uh, breakers. And it's it's not there. Your 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 thoughts, please. Yeah. Does it frustrate so sure. you? I mean, I mean, it does frustrates. Uh, it does frustrates people, uh, athletes like hers. You know, uh, the ones that have retired, and uh, we actually put the 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 goalposts quite high, and we expect by twenty years, we expect you know those records to be broken. Records are to be broken. You know, with all the technology, with all the advancement. At least our athletes should be at least at a world standard. Okay, so let me just talk about my my event itself. Um, my event, uh, I, I would I would say after Yu Fang, um, Yu Fang is from China. Okay, and they imported Yu Fang to 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 compete for my uh, event, and I still wonder why because I was doing well. I was in the A category. I qualified for Olympics. I went for a couple of SEA Games. I won the gold medal. But, you know, an athlete from China was brought in. I said, OK, it's OK. You know, let bring it on. All right. After her, after Atlanta, uh, Yufeng went for Sydney and one more Olympic. And that's it. It's dead. We don't have any successor. There's no one who's able to even qualify for Olympics or even Asian Games. So it's really, really sad. It's not about winning the gold medal, but it's about your, your timing. That is the quality of the sports. And the generation has changed. Uh, we used to train, uh, I used to train on Sundays. I start my training like 4.45 in the morning, five o'clock in the morning. We train really, really hard. We train twice a day, three times a day. And my coach keep forgetting that I'm a, I'm a female. He always trains, you know, puts me with the guys and we train really hard and we want to go for the record. Nothing else but the record. Not even a gold medal, but record. Record is beating your own time. So that fire, I, I guess it's it's slowly down and people just look at gold medal. Winning a SEA Game gold medal doesn't matter. You can win a gold medal in SEA Game, but can you beat the record? Can you beat your own personal timing? I see some people, they have timings like, oh, I did my personal, they are currently an athlete. And they've done their personal best like two years ago. Mm. You know, so for the last two years, what has happened with the timing or even the jump event or, you know, any running event, the personal best is not there. So we need to analyze and see what is wrong with our training method. Are we getting, are we, uh, getting enough competition or any advancement that is needed? So it's kind of stagnant at the athletics uh, arena, I would say. That's my thought. 
Uh, but, but Anastasia, now he, here's the thing. You speak about the medals, yeah? Mm -hmm. That is pretty much the KPI for most people because they say X ringgit has been invested into the sport and the mm -hmm. result must be a medal. Regardless if it breaks a personal pass or it breaks a national record, as long mm -hmm. as we get the medal. We saw this fixation at the 2017 SEA uh, Games in Kuala Lumpur where it was mm -hmm. all about winning the most medals. medals but not you know about the quality about the standards they it was believed that the byproduct of winning a gold medal would naturally be breaking the national record which was not the case your thoughts please i think every athlete if you have the fire uh, to reach the mother of sports olympic your focus would be on timing on hitting your personal best on qualifying for World Cups or qualifying for World Championship, qualifying for Olympics, that would be your ultimate goal. But if you're looking at a short term, just winning a gold medal, just getting a, a you know a, any uh, monetary rewards, you know not that's not going to take you far. And eventually, those kind of athletes retire even faster than even you know reaching to their peak. So that's okay. a sad story. But, but Anastasia, I, I need to um, say this, yeah, many former athletes keep saying that they worked hard, you know, they like you just mentioned, you clocked in mm -hmm. the hours, you started your day early, yeah. mm -hmm. but it's the same with the current athletes as well. I mean, don't, don't tell me that they are not putting in the hours, they are. I mean, mm -hmm. um, they are doing their best as well. But what mm -hmm. is the game changer between then and now, why is it different? Is it because of the lack of motivation? And we often hear this, which irritates me, mental strength. Mm -hmm. Our athletes <laughs> lack mental strength. You know, it, mm -hmm. so your, your thoughts, please. I think uh, for an athlete, when you wear the Malaysian flag on your chest, okay, you, 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 you got to get the fire going. It doesn't matter how much of money you're going to get what reward is in front of you, but you just want to wear the Malaysian flag and stand at the podium and, and your national anthem is being sung because of you. It's, it's about the fire that is missing right now, you know, uh, because there's so much of distraction at the moment at this generation. People spend so much of time on social media. People spend some, so much of time on the phone. Those days we didn't have all that. You know, we want to just go to the track. We want to train harder. If, if today we do, uh, you know, seven kilometers, tomorrow is going to be eight kilometers, you know, and, and tomorrow and. It's fine. Sorry, it's my... fine. It's fine. It's fine. There was the mother mode on. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was the parent mode on. I enjoyed it. I saw him in the background. It's like, when he, what is he going to do? Oh, that's going to be fun. Are we going to have that, that BBC, the BBC this thing, you know, when the, the, the mother was trying to pull the, the thing. It's fine. It's fine. We're we're it's actually fine. very good. It's so we're, funny. We're, we're, we're yeah, okay with yeah. this. So I and I'm I, not going to cut this I, out. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I I guess there is a lot of element that is actually impacting an athlete. You know, uh, the distraction of the world. You know, the parent, the support, and everyone would want to do anything that uh, would have a reward at the back. What is in it for me to do it? What is in it for me to compete? What is in it for me to win a gold medal? What is going to, you know, help me in my future? But those days, we, we never had any agenda. We didn't have anything. We just, you know, we just wanted to win. We wanted to, you know, wear the Malaysian flag and just go all out and never, never give up. You know, I'm not saying that the current athlete do not have that, but there's just so much of distraction, okay, that your razor focus is not there. You know, what is stopping you from being the best of the best? What is stopping you from training even harder than you used to do? You know, do we need technology? Do we need sports science? What do we need? We, do we need world standard trainers or do we need to go overseas? You know, something need to be analyzed and look into why are we not performing? Those days, we, I didn't even have a proper shoe to begin with. You know, when I won my first gold medal in Chiang Mai, I was wearing one size bigger because I couldn't afford to buy a shoe, you know, but now you have sponsors everywhere. So it's about me. I would say the fire that you really want to win for Malaysia is not about you. It's not about winning the, uh, you know, getting the rewards, the money, the recognition, 
but you know just going for your country you got to do it you know for your country then you would really have the fire in you so See, i talk a lot right yeah it's it's good. no talking is good now i, I think it's yeah I, i think today is a uh, children joining parents day because uh, my boy is just next to me anyway uh, <laughs> m- more importantly uh, anastasia uh-huh. um you speak about you know um what you said earlier about the razor about focus yeah about mm-hmm. distractions now yeah what if we were to ask you would you return mm-hmm. to malaysia would you help the athletes here would you play a part in the sporting ecosystem here in this country mm-hmm. your thoughts mm-hmm. please i think i i always thought about it uh one of the reason that i i i after um after commonwealth you know i retired i moved on i i actually it it kind of struggle because you got all the highlight you got all the attention and now what's yeah. next you know you become zero you need yeah. to build yourself you need to look for an identity in the corporate world how am i going to build myself if i could if i went to olympics don't you think i have a bigger dream in my corporate world or being a mom you know so uh being uh, involved in sports it's basically you are married to sports you know you're emotionally very involved as a coach so i couldn't sacrifice that because um i was sacrificing on my children my family i building i've got three wonderful kids So the time for me to focus is my family first and then building my corporate life. Okay. And that's and, what and, I've been focusing. Okay, uh, Anastasia. Now, um mm-hmm. would would I be wrong to say that you are being selfish now because you are mm-hmm. speaking about yourself, you're speaking about your family which, you know, mm-hmm. family comes first. But yep. nevertheless, um you then have got no right to complain or to um say things about or to criticize the uh athletic scene because the people back home will go like it's easy for her to say because she's based like 100 of km mm-hmm. away miles away mm-hmm. and you know mm-hmm. she's commenting about what's happening here she's not helping your thoughts please mm-hmm. okay very uh-huh. good question okay firstly i'm not criticizing anyone okay uh-huh. i'm not complaining uh, no. but what i i would say is uh, you know after i i will be moving back home okay my home Whoa, is malaysia when when okay. when <laughs> <laughs> so i <laughs> I have a, another 2 years assignment in another yeah. country. I'll be moving out from Shanghai uh pretty much soon, uh, maybe after the lockdown and all that. I'll be going to a different country so I'll be doing dual roles. Is that India? And then yes. Ah, yes, okay, near Mumbai. Yeah. Mumbai. Yeah. Mumbai. Near Mumbai, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So, uh and then I'll be back to Malaysia. So when ah. I'm back to Malaysia, one of the things that I I I I kept in my heart is, you know, uh um uh, doing things on the administration side or you know uh being a speaker or getting involved with MSN or OCM you know uh that would be uh, the area that i would like to focus on okay at least my one or two head count is out of my home going gone to university okay <laughs> that i could okay. yeah <laughs> I like the way she incorporated the HR. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's nice to get rid of them after a while, you know. I, 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 the rest of us still got a long way to go. No, it's head counts, bro. It's head counts. <laughs> At least one head count, okay? Yeah. All three okay, gone, even three. better. Yep, anyway, carry on. Yeah, so that would be my area of, of uh, contributing back to the country. I mean... I I can't I can't leave Malaysia. I got to come back home. I need to do something, you know? It's so it's Anastasia, a cycle. I need to complete that. So Anastasia is going to come back to Malaysia and be part of the sporting ecosystem in yes. the next 2 years, correct? Yes, after 2 okay. years. No, no, the truth okay. is is the food. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> la, la, last but not least, Rashid, I I, I need yeah. to ask uh, ask uh, uh Rashid, do we have time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bit, uh, okay, I, time, I need yeah. to ask I uh, I I need to ask Anastasia this. Um Yeah, uh, V Subramaniam, our national walker, yeah. Yeah. who, who mm-hmm. spotted your talent, correct? Yeah. Um, yeah. Now I bumped into him on Thursday. Oh really? Okay. Yes, yes. he he runs a small stall um, in Ampang. Yeah, Gomba, actually. Gomba. Oh, Ampang. Ampang. Yeah, Ampang. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got, yeah. He's got a stall mm-hmm. there. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So I bumped into him, and uh, we mm-hmm. were just uh, having a casual chat, and he told me that his leg was not feeling too good. Mm-hmm. He's having like mm-hmm. tingling sensation and it it's 
he, he's not been feeling good since the lockdown, since March. Um, and when I asked him about treatment or if he had any insurance mm-hmm. plan, uh, mm-hmm. ignorant of me that most insurance companies do not, uh, you know, cover those who are 70 and above. And clearly he's uh, above 70. Mm-hmm. So, so here's the thing. Do you think mm-hmm. that it's time for perhaps the Olympic Council of Malaysia or the Malaysian Athletics uh, Federation, if they can do anything to begin with, mm-hmm. or the National Athletes Welfare Foundation mm-hmm. to introduce an insurance scheme mm-hmm. for athletes like yourself, like Subra, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. who will be able to at least benefit something even if they are 70 or 80. You know, insurance companies, they do not cover one Correct, correct, yeah. correct, so correct. So it's like you pay a small little premium. So it works in, in a very insurance kind of format. You mm-hmm, pay monthly, mm-hmm. but at mm-hmm. least your coverage is extended after 70 or 80. At least you get something, like 20,000 or 30,000. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. See, your thoughts? Yeah. I mean, I, Harish, that's a fantastic idea. That's really a fantastic idea. Actually, Two weeks ago, I, I reached out to an insurance agent to see whether they could cover for my mom. You know, my mom yeah. wasn't feeling well. And they said, no, you know, she's already over 70. No way we could cover. I said, wow. Mm. I, I only found out two weeks ago, actually. I, mm. You have a very good point because we athletes, we don't know how much we have impacted our body. You know, we worked very, very hard. Our bones, our muscle, our heart, you know, especially the sprinters, you know, the heart, you know. And many sprinters actually go through a lot of heart attacks, actually. You mm. know, if, if you look at some analysis, uh, you know. So I think, Harish, that would be a fantastic thing, a big, big gift uh, if this can be implemented for athletes, especially those that are 70 and above or 65 and above. So and maybe, who do you, think, uh, you know, who do you think Yaakib, should spearhead this? Who, who do you think yeah, should spearhead think, this? I think I think Yakip could stand up, uh, could 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 do some uh, some contribution on that, or even OCM, hmm? or even going back to uh, MSN. You know, would you Especially would you would you pay for the a premium? You know, it's a proper insurance yeah, scheme, yeah, but an yeah, insurance scheme that will cover you after seventy. Would you pay for it? Yeah, yeah. Why not? I mean, we need that. You know, we need that. Especially athletes. There's so much of 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 stress we have put on our bodies. We don't know it as we grow older, you know, then we realize, oh, my knee is hurting or my back is hurting or, you know, I've had some, you know, heart issue. And all that is the consequences of how much we have impacted our body during training session. So and that is the fact. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Rashid, okay. any other questions? No, I don't. Actually, I had uh, lots more, but I, I do uh, uh, agree with a lot of uh, what you said. Uh, especially okay. the beginning in terms of the, uh, you know talking about the personal best uh you know i I've, we tend to forget that's you know that's what you need to do to get to the olympics you know it's not the you know going for the goal but trying to get to olympics is already a big thing and and uh, that's already a success in itself that's the first step of the success but yeah. uh, if i do carry on we'll we'll be here for for now because you know there's very similarities <laughs> that i i would probably ask but uh, thank you very much um firstly we'd like to thank um uh, Amnik, our apparel sponsor for myself and Harish for, for being part of the show. Um, Anastasia, thank you ever so much for, for taking your time out to speak to us, on, especially on a Sunday. However, do you have any parting words before, before we go off? Um, I just want to say that I miss Malaysia a lot. I miss the athletic uh, arena. Uh, and of course, I want to be back. Uh, you know, it doesn't complete me until I, I go back to my country and contribute. Uh, that would be my parting words. And thank you, Rashid. And thank you, Harish, for reaching out. Really appreciate uh, your time. And uh, the questions really make me think more. Uh, my heart is coming back to Malaysia more and more. So awesome. thank you. That's good. We uh, can't to, and and we what, can't what, what, what's the first food that you'll eat? <laughs> uh, let's see. I, I just want some good nasi lemak and a teh tarik. It's exactly <laughs> what I had yesterday. <laughs> 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 just, just to like, uh, and it it wasn't in in in, in Brickfields, uh, but it was in in, in somewhere near Bangsala. But the food the food is still good. The food is still good. Uh, but on behalf of, on behalf of uh, Harris myself, thank you ever so much again uh, for joining us. Uh, for for those of you out there, don't forget to subscribe. Of course, uh, press the notific- notification button and do like us on this show. This has been the RSS with HD. Bye bye.